Ever wondered what are the most important literary terms you should know? Well, you're not alone. The world of literature is vast and complex, and it's filled with an array of terms that can sometimes be daunting to grasp. But fret not, because that's exactly why we're here today. Literary terms are the building blocks of literature. They're the tools writers use to give their work depth and meaning. They help us to analyze and understand literature in a more profound way. Whether it's a metaphor in a poem, a climax in a story, or a tragic hero in a play, literary terms are integral to our understanding of these works. In this video, we're going to dive deep into the world of literary terms. We'll be covering 50 key terms that every literature enthusiast should know. So, buckle up and prepare your mind for an enlightening journey through the world of literary terms. Starting off our list, we have allegory, a term that refers to a story, poem or picture that can be interpreted to reveal a hidden meaning. Think of George Orwell's Animal Farm. It's not just about animals running a farm, it's a critique of totalitarian regimes. Next up, alliteration. This one's fun. It's the repetition of the same sound at the start of adjacent or closely connected words. She sells seashells by the seashore is a classic example. Then we have allusion. It's a reference to another work of literature, person or event. For example, in The Catcher in the Rye, Holden Caulfield mentions Romeo and Juliet, which is an allusion to Shakespeare's play. Jumping to ambiguity, it's when the meaning of a word, phrase or entire text is uncertain. Ever read a poem and thought what did the author mean by that? That's ambiguity for you. Analogy is up next. It's a comparison between two things for the purpose of explanation or clarification. Life is like a box of chocolates, you never know what you're gonna get, from Forrest Gump, is a delightful analogy. We move on to anaphora, the repetition of a certain word or phrase at the beginning of successive lines of writing or speech. Martin Luther King Jr.'s I Have a Dream speech beautifully uses anaphora. Anecdote, our seventh term, is a short, amusing or interesting story about a real incident or person. It's often used to illustrate a point. Antagonist, the character in a story who opposes the protagonist, is next on our list. Darth Vader from Star Wars is a well-known antagonist. Ninth, we have anthropomorphism, attributing human characteristics to animals or objects. A. A. Milne's Winnie the Pooh is an excellent example of anthropomorphism. Finally, aphorism. It's a concise statement of a truth or opinion, like Benjamin Franklin's time is money. These are just the beginning. Let's move on to the next set of terms. Continuing our journey, we have assonance, a term referring to the repetition of the sound of a vowel. It's like a melody in words where the same vowel sound is repeated in a line or sentence. Think of Edgar Allan Poe's The Raven and the silken sad uncertain rustling of each purple curtain. Next up is Bildungsroman, a type of novel that tells a coming-of-age story. This German term translates to education novel. An iconic example is J.D. Salinger's The Catcher in the Rye, tracing the experiences of young Holden Caulfield. Cacophony, on the other hand, is the use of harsh, discordant sounds in literary compositions. It's like fingernails on a chalkboard but in written form. Lewis Carroll's Jabberwocky is brimming with cacophonous language. Then we have catharsis, an emotional release experienced by the readers or viewers of a tragic drama. Think of the relief you feel after a good cry during a heart-wrenching movie. Moving on to climax, it's the peak of a story, where the tension or conflict reaches its highest point. The battle between Harry Potter and Voldemort in Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows is a classic climax. Conflict, a fundamental element of any story, is the struggle between opposing forces. It could be a man against nature, like in Jack London's To Build a Fire, or a man against himself, like in Fyodor Dostoevsky's Crime and Punishment. Connotation is the emotional or cultural association with a word beyond its dictionary definition. For example, home might technically mean a place of residence, but it connotes warmth, safety, and comfort. Consonance is the repetition of consonant sounds in close proximity, like in the tongue twister, she sells seashells by the seashore. Denouement is the resolution or outcome of a story where all loose ends are tied up. 
It's the happily ever after in fairy tales. Finally, we have dialect, a specific form of language spoken by a particular region or group. Mark Twain masterfully uses Southern American dialect in the adventures of Huckleberry Finn. Great, we've covered 20 terms so far. Let's move on to the next set. Next up, we have dialogue, a conversation between two or more people as a feature of a book, play or film. Think of your favorite novel or movie, the interactions between characters that drive the story. That's dialogue. We then encounter diction, which refers to the choice of words and style of expression that an author makes and uses in a work of literature. It's how an author can make a character sound realistic or a setting feel vivid. Another exciting term is dramatic irony. This occurs when the audience knows something that the characters do not. It creates suspense or humor and is used to engage the audience with the narrative. Imagine knowing a secret that a character is unaware of. That's dramatic irony. Moving on to epiphany. This is a moment in the story where a character achieves realization, awareness or a feeling of knowledge, after which events are seen through the prism of this new light. It's like a light bulb moment for a character. Euphemism is up next. It's a polite, indirect expression that replace words and phrases considered harsh and impolite or which suggests something unpleasant. For example, passed away instead of died. Then comes exposition. This is a literary device used to introduce background information about events, settings, characters or other elements of a work to the audience or readers. It sets the scene for the story. Foreshadowing is a literary device in which a writer gives an advance hint of what is to come later in the story. It often appears at the beginning of a story or a chapter and helps the reader develop expectations about the upcoming events. Hyperbole is next. It's a figure of speech that involves an exaggeration of ideas for the sake of emphasis. For example, I've told you a million times. Imagery is a literary term used for language and description that appeals to our five senses. It paints a picture in the reader's mind. Lastly, we have irony. It's a figure of speech in which words are used in such a way that their intended meaning is different from the actual meaning of the words. It can often be funny or dramatic. We've reached our halfway mark. Let's continue to the next set of terms. Onwards, we have metaphor, a figure of speech in which a word or phrase is applied to an object or action to which it is not literally applicable. It's like saying time is a thief. Time isn't really stealing anything, but we understand the sentiment being expressed. Next up, we have mood. This is the feeling or atmosphere that a writer creates in a literary work to evoke specific emotions or reactions from the reader. Consider Edgar Allan Poe's The Raven and its eerie, suspenseful mood. Then there's motif, a recurring element that has symbolic significance in a story. Like the green light in The Great Gatsby, it's a symbol that keeps popping up, hinting at larger themes. Onomatopoeia, now there's a fun one. It's a word that phonetically imitates or suggests the sound that it describes. Think buzz, whisper, clang, sizzle, and so on. Following that is oxymoron, a figure of speech in which two opposite ideas are joined to create an effect. Bittersweet, living dead, seriously funny. These are all examples of oxymorons. Next in line is paradox, a statement that appears to be self-contradictory or silly, but may include a latent truth. Like Oscar Wilde's famous line, I can resist everything except temptation. Then we have personification, which is attributing human characteristics to something non-human or the representation of an abstract quality in human form. The wind whispered through the trees. Here the wind doesn't literally whisper, but we get a vivid picture, don't we? Plot, a crucial one, is the sequence of events and happenings that make up a story. There's usually a pattern, a setup, a conflict, and a resolution. The protagonist is the main character of the story, the one we root for, like Harry Potter in Harry Potter series or Katniss Everdeen in The Hunger Games. Lastly, we have pun, a play on words that produce a humorous effect by using a word that suggests two or more meanings. Shakespeare was quite the punster, wasn't he? We're almost at the end. Let's move on to the final set of literary terms. Finally, we have simile, 
a figure of speech involving the comparison of one thing with another thing of a different kind, like saying, as brave as a lion. Moving on, symbol refers to an object that represents something else, like a dove symbolizing peace. Syntax is the arrangement of words and phrases to create well-formed sentences. Now, theme is the central topic or idea explored in a text. Tone, on the other hand, is the writer's attitude or feelings towards the subject matter and audience. Tragedy is a form of drama based on human suffering that invokes an accompanying catharsis. Understatement is a figure of speech employed by writers to intentionally make a situation seem less important than it actually is. Very similitude is the likeness or resemblance of a fictional work to reality. Verse is a single line of poetry or specific subdivision in a song or poem. And finally, vignette is a brief evocative description, account, or episode. That concludes our list of 50 important literary terms. Remember, understanding these terms can greatly enhance your appreciation and understanding of literature. So, there we have it, a whirlwind tour of 50 key literary terms. These terms are not just mere words, they are the building blocks of literature. They breathe life into the narratives we read, shaping our understanding and appreciation of the stories that unfold before us. Imagine trying to appreciate a painting without knowing about color, texture and form. It's the same with literature. Understanding these terms helps us delve deeper, to see beyond the surface, and truly appreciate the complexity and beauty of the written word. I encourage you all to continue exploring these terms, apply them to your reading, and see the difference it makes. Use them as a lens to view literature, to interpret and understand the nuances that make every story unique and every reading experience enriching. Thank you for joining us on this enlightening journey through the world of literary terms. Until next time, keep exploring and expanding your literary horizons. Do like, share and subscribe our channel.